All right, if we could turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, if we could all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Philippians chapter 3, verse starting at verse 17. When you have it, say amen. amen. You still look and say, wait a minute. Philippians chapter 3. I'll be reading from the New International Version. All right, starting at verse 17. And it reads, Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Paul says, I want to I want to focus this morning when Paul says in verse 20, he says, but our citizenship is in heaven. Now I find I found that pretty interesting when I was reading this because at the time that Paul is speaking this, at the time that Paul is writing this letter, he himself and everybody that he is writing this letter to are currently citizens here on earth. But when he's writing this, he doesn't acknowledge any of the citizenship that he or his people have here on earth. He's speaking of citizenship in heaven. So that tells me, you know, that even though Paul is here on earth, he still has his mind on heaven. Even though he's in this earthly body, he still has his mind on heavenly things. He's thinking about things above and not things below here on earth. And I think that's very important for all of us to keep in mind. We need to keep in mind the big picture of things, the big picture of we need to keep in mind that wherever we are on earth, this is not our final destination. We need to keep in mind that this is just a rest stop, right? This is just a layover for us, you know, because our final destination is in heaven. And when you think about it, you know, the saints, the old saints back in the day, they used to be so excited when they, when they thought about heaven. They just... They couldn't wait to get to the pearly gates of heaven, the streets that were paved with gold. All the songs they sang were about heaven. They just couldn't wait to meet their Savior. But now here we are in 2011, and we done moved to the suburbs. We live in nice houses now. Some of us are driving nice cars. We got good jobs. And a lot of us are just so consumed with the comfort that we have here on earth, you know. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I get caught up in it sometimes. As soon as flat screen TVs came out, I just I just had to have me, my flat screen TV, all the electronics and everything. There are a lot of good pleasures here on earth, amen? Yeah. But we gotta keep in mind that no matter how good we may have it here on earth, that is nothing compared to what it's gonna be like in heaven. When Jesus describes heaven, he says it's going to be paradise. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I mean, no matter how good it is here on earth, it's not paradise. Uh, for one, we still live in this earthly body. I don't know about y'all, but I get sick every now and then. Amen? Sometimes I get tired in my body. Sometimes I get sore. I get headaches. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and 
I don't feel like getting up because my body is tired. But when we get to heaven, Paul says in um, verse 22, he says he will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body, Jesus' glorious body. Can you imagine just having that new body where you have no more pain, no more suffering? Amen. You don't have to go on diets anymore to make sure you're in perfect health. You don't have to be concerned about your blood pressure. Amen. I, mean, I got my blood pressure a little over a year ago. The doctor told me it was borderline high blood pressure. I had to go on a diet. I had to lose some weight. And I had to give up all the foods. And I, I felt pain. I had to go to the gym. I felt soreness in my body. I felt pain. But when we get to heaven, all that pain is going to be over. Yes. Amen. Amen. And just even, um, not just the new body that we're going to have, just, just the atmosphere in heaven, you know. There's going to be streets paved with gold. You know, we're down here on earth, and you're driving on the road, and then you're not even paying attention, and boom, boom, and it's a pothole that you hit, you know. And it just, there's so much flaws in the roads here on earth, just everything. But when we get to heaven, there's going to be many mansions there. There's going to be streets paved with gold. There's going to be pearly gates. And we are going to have a good time in our new bodies. Amen. Amen. So Paul knew this. Paul knew this. And when we read through Paul's letters, we read about him being persecuted. But he didn't mind because he knew that his citizenship was in heaven. Amen. All right. So. Uh, another, another thing that I thought about when I was reading about, you know, this, this citizenship of heaven, I, I started thinking about um, everything that is carried with, you know, the status of citizenship. I mean, all of us in here, we are U.S. citizens. And because we're U.S. citizens, there are certain things that are required of us in order to remain citizens of the U.S. Uh, number one, we have a set of rules. We have a set of laws to follow, right? We can't just go around doing any and everything that we want. And we look at all the prison systems. What, are the, what do the prison systems have? They have men and women who have broken the laws. They were citizens of this country. They broke the laws, and now they're in jail. So if we're citizens of somewhere, we have a list of rules and regulations to follow. So if you and I are going to be citizens of heaven, we also have some rules and regulations to follow. Amen? I mean, we read the Bible, and Jesus, he sets the standard of living that we are supposed to live. He has a set of rules and regulations that we need to follow. I don't, I don't understand how a lot of us have gotten in this whole mindset these days that, well, all my sins are forgiven, so... I could just do whatever, you know, Jesus paid for it all. But yes, Jesus, he paid for it all. All of our sins are forgiven, but he still expects us to follow the law. Jesus even said in Matthew chapter 5, I did not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill the law. Right. Amen? Amen? So when we're living in our lives, we got to keep, keep in mind that as citizens of heaven... <laughs> We, too, have some laws and regulations to follow. Second thing that I thought of about our citizenship, I thought about as a citizen, all of us are required to do some form of work for the benefit of society. You know, we go to our jobs every day. We are required to do some kind of work to benefit society. We have teachers that go to work every day. They're benefiting society because they're teaching our young children. We have police officers that go to work. We have firefighters. They're working for the benefit of society. As a citizen of any country, you are expected to do some kind of work. Amen? Amen. All right, so when we are, if the Bible says we are citizens of heaven, God also requires us to do some work. Amen. We are, we're not here to just take up space in the church on Sunday morning. We're not supposed to be just sitting in the pews and that's all we do. God wants us to work. The Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. 